powerful, powerful, powerful song. There's so much uh, that I want to get to today. And, uh, um, but I, I'm just going to start with that whole song, It Is Well. You see, it is well with my soul does not mean that all things are well. It's a powerful, powerful statement. You see, you can get there. You can say it is well, but you can't do that by yourself. We got this phrase in our culture, we always like to say, fake it till you make it. Like you can't fake it till you make it to, you, to like a soul that feels well. You can't fake that. You need Jesus to be a part of that. And he's willing to be a part of that. He wants to be a part of that. He's the source. He's the reason because you need something bigger and stronger and more powerful and more loving than what you're facing to be able to say, yeah, not everything's well around me, but it is well with my soul. And oftentimes we get so caught up on the destination that we miss part of the most beautiful part and don't, get, don't lose this. We want to be able to say, it is well with my soul. We want to be able to stand strong. We want to be able to say that. But don't forget, the journey from, from where you're at to there, guess who's walking with you? Jesus. And having Jesus walk with you on that journey, don't miss out on his goodness and his presence and his love with you in that peace, okay, man, God is good. He's with us in those moments. It is well with my soul. And uh, hey, I wanna just be able to say to each and every one of you, happy Mother's Day. Big day today, happy Mother's Day, moms. That is awesome. And uh, yeah, you can clap for moms, it's awesome, yeah. In fact, we probably should clap for moms. It's because of them you're here, man, that we're here. You know, it's God and doing a mighty work in that womb, man, that we're here. And so moms, we say thank you. I feel like, you know, it's kind of a crock. You only get one day. Don't you think so too? Don't you think every day should be Mother's Day? I mean, for all the love, the sacrificial love, I mean, I was cracking up. Even this morning, our little guy who was out here bringing Doritos, uh, he was like, hey, mom, have you seen my mechanical pencil? Like, it's her job to find. But there's something hardwired in a mom that just shows us this beautiful picture of Jesus, beautiful picture of God who will stop and who will help and who will love. And then there's these other moments that we get to see these beautiful pictures of God where the answer is just simply no. <laughs> and we need those too, man. We need those too. And so, hey, on Mother's Day, and I just want to let you know that this, this is going to be the best Mother's Day message I give all year today. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. Best Mother's Day message you're giving all year it's happening today. It's going to be fantastic. So moms, happy Mother's Day. If you, if you missed last week and you saw on the screen, we're in, the, we're in a series that we're calling a comeback. We're talking about over these next few weeks and the weeks prior, we're talking about coming back from setbacks that we all face. And if you missed last week, we talked about coming back from a setback that I labeled just the granddaddy of them all. In fact, this is really a source of many of the other setbacks we face. And it's when we experience a relational disconnect with God. Maybe we've drifted, maybe some hardships entered our lives, but we've disconnected with God, and the comeback is reconnecting with him or connecting with him for the very first time. And God is all about relationships with us and bringing us into relationship with him through his son Jesus. And if you missed it, I just think that it's too good for you to miss. If you, if you couldn't be here last week, please go check it out. You can check it out on our media page at hpcc.church. And uh, from there, we're going to talk today about coming back from another setback that many people are familiar with. And we're going to talk about coming back from a season of loss. And the comeback is actually finding new life in seasons of loss. We all know what it is to walk through a season of loss. We all know what it is to experience loss. And there's something wild about this day that is unique to this day, even though loss is not unique to it. There's something about Mother's Day that for some folks, and probably some, some folks in here, that you're feeling a sense of loss today. And that sense could be around, absolutely could be around the fact that you lost your mom. It could be around the fact that you want to be a mom and you're not a mom yet. It could be around the loss of a child and Mother's Day just brings this whole thing back around. And I want to let you know that, see, God wants to do a new work and he wants to bring new life to you during these seasons of loss. And while Mother's Day 
can amplify some of the loss we feel surrounding around it. A season of loss is not isolated or unique to Mother's Day. We've all experienced it. Maybe it was a pet. Maybe you lost a pet. And when you had to say goodbye to Toto or, you know, Fufu or whatever you name your animal, it's hard. I get it. I've been there before. I think about the, uh, I think about the high school graduates during this season. Are there any high school graduates in here today or soon to be? Hey, man, awesome. I see, I see one. I see a couple. There we go. I mean, hey, congratulations, man. That's awesome. That is awesome. And there's this beautiful part. I mean, you've been waiting since you were a freshman to get to this moment. And it feels so good. And you're going to get the diploma. And it's going to feel so good. And then all of a sudden, it's just kind of, kind of wash over you. You're going to be like, it's over. It's done. And you might experience this season of loss. What about college grads? Have we got any college grads in here today? Or, uh, hey, man, congratulations, you guys. It's awesome. I remember college, it was so much fun, man. You had all these new friends, it was absolutely great, and all these activities, and then all of a sudden it's over, and you get this diploma, and they say, hey, you've got to go out, and you've got to get your own mailbox, and we might even send you some bills, and you feel like an adult all of a sudden, and it just doesn't feel quite like maybe you thought it would, man, and you just mourn this season of loss, but I want to let you know that for every setback, there's a comeback, and for every loss, there can be new life. Maybe it's, maybe you as a parent get what I'm talking about. I was, I was, it happened, it happened last week. I was, I was just talking with some parents, and I heard a mom say, she started talking about her son was going to be playing his final soccer game. For four years in high school, she had loved to go to that soccer game. And one of the moms in this group said, so are you ready to go to his last game? And she says, don't talk to me about it. Don't talk to me about it. I can't handle it. Why? Because she was mourning the fact that the season was coming to an end. And that there was just this season of loss. She wasn't ready for new life. She's just experiencing this setback of loss in her life. We all know what it is to experience setbacks. Maybe for you today, maybe you've had a lifelong dream. It's a business idea or a career path, and now you find yourself at a stage of life that that looks more like it's in the rear view. I would tell you that even though a season may be over, somebody might be gone, doesn't mean your best days are behind you. You see, Jesus knew what it was to experience loss himself. I mean, you think about the fact that he lost one of his deepest friends. We read in the book of John that not only the, at the idea of losing his friend Lazarus, but you look at the idea of just looking out and seeing so, people, so many people disconnected from God. We read that Jesus wept over that. And why? Because there was just this loss that was going on, and he felt that. But I would also let you know that Jesus is the king of of comebacks. He is the king of comebacks. You read all throughout scripture and wherever there, and we're going to talk a lot about him today, and wherever there was this setback or this season of loss, we find Jesus creating the author of an awesome comeback, and he's right smack dab in the middle of that thing. And I could give you example after example after example. In fact, I will give us one today. But here's what I want to tell you. Here's what I want to talk about. If you find yourself in a season of loss, Jesus wants to bring in new life from that season. He wants you to experience a comeback. And so today I'm going to talk to you about how to come back. And as simple as this might sound, maybe for some of you, maybe your comeback starts today from season of loss to finding new life in that season. Maybe it starts with something this simple. Stop counting your losses and begin to start counting your blessings. Just a change of perspective See what God has given you. That is not to minimize any amount of pain there, because that's real. But to be able to have Jesus walk through that with you, that's a gift. And he wants to bring new life out of those seasons of loss. And so maybe what you'll have to do is let go of some of that loss 
and put your hand in his and let him lead. What I'd love for you guys to do is I'd love for you guys to turn with me to Luke chapter 7. And we are going to look at a powerful comeback story on this Mother's Day. It's a, it's a setback of loss, but it's a comeback of epic proportion. And who's in the middle of this thing? Jesus is right in the middle of it doing a new work. Luke chapter 7, we're going to start in verse 11. You check on your U version. I would encourage you to bring your Bibles with you because we use them each and every week. And there's something beautiful about being able to mark up and write thoughts that you don't lose. And that would be great. So starting Luke chapter 7, verse 11, we're going to read this moment in his ministry. Soon afterwards, Jesus went to a town called what? Man, that's a weird name for a town, isn't it? Jesus has actually been in Capernaum. That's where he's been. That's kind of where he's, his adult base of ministry takes place. That's his hometown, his adult. It's on the northern part of the Sea, uh, the sea of Galilee. That's where Capernaum is. Nain is somewhere about 20 miles away. And we read that Jesus is going to go to, to the town called Nain, and his disciples are with him. But also there's a large crowd. See, people, people knew who Jesus was. Jesus had just, he had just uh, performed a couple miracles in Capernaum. And so the people are now along with him. They want to see if he's going to do another one. They're walking with him. And we read that as he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out. Jesus is entering. A funeral is coming out. Well, what's going on with this funeral? It says the only son of a mom his mom is experiencing a season of loss. She's got a setback of loss. Why? Because she just lost her only son. And then on top of that, we'll talk about this in a minute, she's a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. Well, at least there's a ray of golden sunshine there that she wasn't alone in the moment. But if we know our history, if we look at this from a historical context, we can really see the sense of loss is magnified in her life. She just lost her only son. Her only son. That she bore and that she raised and that she had hopes and that she had dreams and that she loved, that she laughed with, that she cried for. She just lost her only son. And she's experiencing loss. She's set back with laws, but it's amplified for this very reason. She's a widow, and in their historical context, in the, in the culture of the Hebrew people, it was a custom that if, if, if your husband died and he had a brother, it was the brother's duty, it was the brother's responsibility, it was the obligation of your husband's brother to now marry you to take care of your family and so that your, his brother's name could carry on. The fact that we read here, if we can just put it back up, the fact that we read that she's a widow, that she's mourning this loss, tells her there was no brother. She's alone. She has no more family. She's mourning that. But in, in, even more than that, so she's got the setback, she's lost her son, There's, she feels all alone, There's a third setback that is compounding this sense of loss is that she's a woman in a male-dominated culture and there's nobody obligated to take care of her anymore. Now you read, just like I read, well, she was surrounded by a large group of friends. Surely they're going to take care of her, right? Well, it's often not wise to try to put ourselves in this context, but I think we're safe here. When somebody you love, if you experience the loss of a loved one, or if a friend of yours experienced the loss of a loved one, we are really good in the short run of coming around them, and we're really good at supporting them. But because we're not obligated to care for them, we do good for about a four-week period, and then the crowds begin to disappear, don't they? Because we get caught back in this rhythm of life. And she knows, yeah, I've got a crowd with me right now, But where are they going to be in four weeks? The way I used to do life isn't going to be the way, there's no way I'm not going to be able to do life going forward. She's mourning the loss of her son. She's mourning the loss of her future because it's not what she thought it was going to be. So she finds herself in this season of loss. But for every setback, there's a comeback. 
for every season of loss, there can be new life in Jesus' name. And here's what we see. Who's there in the middle of her loss? We read that Jesus shows up as they're coming out. He's coming in. And let's check this out. When the Lord saw her, because he's leading this procession into town. When the Lord saw her, what happened? You guys say this for me. Okay, stop right there. His heart went out to her. Jesus saw what was going on. He knew the situation well, and his heart went out to her. You guys, if you find yourself in a season of loss, I want you to know it might not feel like it, but Jesus is present, and his heart goes out to you. He is not unaware of your pain. He is not unaware of the suffering that is going on. He's very well aware. He's not only aware, he's there, and his heart goes out to you. Doesn't mean he's going to take it away. He's just going to be there. I love what he says next. So his heart goes out to her. So, you know, when you think that somebody's heart goes out to you, you would think that if Jesus was going to walk up there, he would go up to her and say, I'm so sorry for your loss. Is there anything I can do to help you? But what does Jesus say? Don't cry. Wow. Listen, if we don't know any better, if we didn't know any better, if we didn't have the precursor to that, we would think that Jesus is just being a little insensitive. Because here he is, he's walking up, this mom just lost her son, like her future that she thought was going to be there isn't there the way she thought it was going to be. And what is Jesus' introductory like comments to her? Don't cry. But we know that he's saying that out of love. And there's something I want us to see here. Is Jesus interrupts the funeral out of love. And love wants to interrupt the things that are dead in our life. Those seasons of loss. It wants to bring new life. You see, love never stays still. It doesn't stay quiet. It doesn't stay inactive. What does love do? Love shows up. It's resilient. It doesn't stay down. Love doesn't give up. It fights. It hopes. It's got a fierce penchant for action, which is exactly what we see Jesus doing, engaging this woman in her season of loss, and she's on the precipice of getting new life. She just doesn't know it yet. New life has just showed up. And so he interrupts, says, don't cry. And then what does he do? says, then he walks from her and says, don't cry. He walks over and he touched the beer. This is what it's called. This is the beer. Beer. You start with a B and then just go with er. You touch the beer, which is basically like a pallet. These guys were carrying a pallet with a dead man on it. He was wrapped in his funeral burial clothes. That's what he's in. He had been, his body had been prepared for this. And so they're marching him out and they're walking him out on what I would call a pallet. And they're carrying him. And as Jesus walks over and touches that thing, we see that there's such respect for who he is as a rabbi and as a teacher that the bearers of this thing just stand still. They stop what they're doing. And they let Jesus touch the, the, the pallet. And then Jesus goes a step further. He only says, he not only says, don't cry, but then he says this, young man, I say to you, get up. Maybe it sounded like young man, get up. Maybe it was like young man, get up. So I was at Buster's the other day. Or what if I was at Buster's the other day is a better way to put it. And I'm sitting at a funeral and some guy walks up during the middle of the service, interrupts the whole thing and walks to the front. And he looks at the dead man in the casket and says, young man, get up. What's going through my mind? This dude's crazy. This is wild. This is out there. So if you feel that way a little bit, I get it. Because in our culture, especially in our culture, that would be, that would be like way out there. But wouldn't just, uh, like, you know, if that happened, we'd probably be thinking to ourselves, somebody call security, right? Like, this is insensitive. You don't do this in front of the family. This is, this is inappropriate. But Jesus goes in and he interrupts the funeral in love's name. And he commands this young man to stand up. 
So what happens? The dead man stands up. I want to talk about that in just a minute. But if you think that this might be a little bit crazy, so the dead guy stands up. Jesus says, get up. And he gets up. He wasn't sleeping. He had been dead. Now, if this sounds a little bit out there to you, what I want to do is I want to take you back to Genesis. If you go all the way back to the story of creation, God spoke life out of nothing. There was nothing living there, and he spoke it into existence. He commanded it into existence. So if you're tempted to think, this is weird, this is out there, what I'm telling you, in this moment, what Jesus Christ is doing is he's doing what he has done from the very beginning. He is speaking life over death. He is commanding life to come out of absolutely nothing that was not there. You see, God is in the business of taking dead things and bringing them back to life. It is the central theme of the good news of Jesus Christ. It is the central core message of the gospel of Jesus Christ making dead things come back to life. No, not dead things, dead people. We try to find things in this life. We try to draw life from things that are dead. When we go through seasons of loss, what we want to do is we want to try to climb out of that thing. So we attach ourselves to a a relationship or we'll replace a relationship with a different relationship without ever addressing the issue in hopes that this one will be better than the last. Or we try to fill that void of loss with, uh, man, just like power of positive thinking. Or I'm going to go buy some stuff. We look for life from something that cannot provide it. And what I want to let you know as clear, as simple as I can, is that there is nothing so dead. In fact, it hangs on this man's wall, Chris Kinner's wall, right across from my office. It says, there is nothing so dead that God cannot make something grow out of it. And the message for us in this is clear. That young man rose up at the command of Jesus Christ. And if you're walking through a season of loss and it feels like a part of you has died, God can resurrect and give you new life. You see, that young man stood up, and let's just go back to this for a minute. The dead man sat up, and he began to talk. Why wouldn't you love to be there? Social media feeds be going berserk with that one, wouldn't it? You won't believe what I saw today. And then Jesus hands him back to his mom. I want to be really clear here. Jesus did not give that kid, that man, his life back. He did not give that man his life back. He gave that man new life. And there is a big difference Because that guy was dead. So he didn't get his life back. He got new life. And if you got new life, that's probably, you're going to behave differently than what you did before. Because you understand the gift that you've been given. You're going to love deeper. You're going to care more. You're going to follow more closely. That kid did not get his life back. He got a new life with a whole new perspective. And I would also tell you that that mom, Jesus did not restore her future. He gave her a new one. Jesus gave her a new future. And isn't that what Jesus does in our lives He gives us new life and he gives us a new future. Not one like the old one because if we followed the old path, it would just lead to a lifetime, an eternity of death and destruction. But because he gives us new life, we get a new future in him. One that is without end and one that is in paradise. Is that not the ultimate comeback? God wants to do a comeback. He wants to breathe new life into those seasons of loss. And if you find yourself in that season of loss, I just want to tell you that God wants to breathe new life. And it might begin with you. Stop counting your losses and begin to count your blessing. It might be you inviting Jesus to interrupt the funeral 
that is in procession right now in your life. There are some things we can learn from this story about going from a season of loss to finding a season of new life. And there are three, and I'll make them quick. The first one is we walk through our season of loss. We don't wallow in it. When we experience loss, we just want to sit in it. But this widow really shows us something here. Is she's grieving deeply, but yet she chooses to walk. She knows something about her situation, or maybe she's just being a really strong mom. But she made a smart decision regardless. She walked through and didn't wallow in. And when we experience loss, we want to wallow and not walk. But if we're going to move from setback to comeback, if we're going to come back from our setback, we've got to walk and not wallow in. The second thing is, is she was really smart. And she made the decision to invite people to walk with her in her season of loss. Now, it is human nature when we feel loss, we want to run from We want to hide. We want to get in a room and we want to be with ourselves. We want to be alone by ourselves. Basically, we want to withdraw from. But this widow did something really profound. She invited people to walk with her during the funeral procession. Here at Highland, we make a big deal, unashamedly so. Listen, we were created for relationship. So we're going to talk about relationship. We're going to talk about relationship with God the Father through his son Jesus Christ and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit who walks with us and counsels us on our journey. We're going to talk about that relationship. But one of the greatest gifts that God has given us outside of his son Jesus is one another, which is to walk through, to be in community with. And if you're walking through a season of loss, and you're doing that by yourself, I want to encourage you to invite people to walk with you. Because it's good to know that you're not alone. Those hugs, those handshakes, those texts, those phone calls, they matter deeply in seasons of loss. And you know what I'm talking about if they're not there. And you know what I'm talking about if you've received them as you're walking through loss. God uses them in a powerful, powerful way. But I would also say that loss is so real, you can get stuck and wallow in it so easy that you need more help. And on Friday night, we have a group called Celebrate Recovery that meets. And there are a bunch of people who are recovering wallowers. The only time wallowing is good is during elk season, okay? And wallows get awesome. But if you're wallowing in a season of loss... There are people who have been where you've been and they'll walk with you through that so that you can celebrate you're now walking instead of wallowing. Check it out. But here's the so. Walk, don't wallow. Invite people to walk with you. And here's the third one. The way forward is in Jesus. The way forward is in Jesus. Don't long for the good old days. Ask him to give you new life. Say, Lord, I need new life. You might want to wallow. You might want to stay stuck. You might want to ask back for when Jesus is wanting to do something new in you. And the way forward is found in Jesus because life is found in Jesus. Both here and forevermore. Don't hope your circumstances will change and new life will come out of that when you can have the author of life walk with you and bring something to life that was once dead and do something new. New hope, new life, new path. We'll end there. Every setback has a comeback. And for the seasons of loss, the comeback is new life and it's found in Jesus. But I just want to be really clear. Don't treat Jesus like a Band-Aid. Like I'm going to just slap him on my hurt and I'm going to keep going. He's not a Band-Aid. He's the cure. 
He's life. Invite him to walk with you. Invite him to speak life over those parts of your heart and life that are dead. And then just walk with him. And as you walk with him, you'll see a tiny little sprout. And it'll grow. And it'll grow. And it'll grow. And it'll be new life growing in you. Something you never thought was possible. Something that wouldn't be possible apart from Jesus. The way forward is found in him. Lord God, I believe that new life is found in you. God, I know that we in here will go through seasons of loss. I believe that you care. So help us trust that you will bring new life to us that you will walk with us, that you will be there, and that we can trust. God, we praise you for being there. We praise you for the new life through your son Christ. May we leave like that widow did that day, like that son did that day, like that crowd that did that day, and speak of the glorious name of Jesus that brings dead people back to life. In Jesus' name, amen.